Adam commences the construction of an animated American icon. USA! USA! Starting with upholstery foam. That's pretty good. Adam utilizes a method with familiar, family-friendly results. This technique that I'm using of gluing an open cell urethane foam to itself is referred to as additive foam building. Because instead of like casting and mold making inflexible foam, I'm physically building the parts that I need out of sheet foam. What you might not know, this is how all your Muppets were made. Yep. Same technique. There we go. <laughs> Do I look like Homer at all? Hi. <laughs> With the arms starting to take shape, it's onto Homer's famously tubby torso. One, two, three, four, and five. Doesn't look like much, but that's going to be Homer soon. A series of cylindrical discs glued together form the tapered shape. Yeah! The human-like mass and density will come later. For now, Adam's immersed in his art. I know exactly what it feels like to be Michelangelo. Oh, maybe not exactly, but you know, just like a little bit. If he carved in foam and made cartoon characters. This is what we call a shop shower. Next, the arms are attached to shoulder joints. <laughs> and the legs are measured, cut, and positioned on the posterior. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. And with those foam pieces of the puzzle in place. All right, I'm pretty happy with that. That's looking a lot like Homer. Adam heads out for help with Homer's head. This is the center of what used to be industrial light magic. Now, behind that blue door is legendary machinist Merrick Cheney, who built armatures for the stop motion films Nightmare Before Christmas and a million other movies. And he is going to help us get Homer's head screwed on right. So, Merrick, how's this going to work? So, we've taken your model of uh, Homer's head, I've converted it into a machinable file, and I've cut it up into like eight chunks. That is cool. And they all fit together kind of like a, like a three-dimensional puzzle. And that eight-piece puzzle will form a central cavity, a negative space mold of Homer's ironically large cranium. While Adam waits for all eight, the Heinemann has been concocting an ingenious plan. In the cartoon, Homer appears to be on a wrecking ball that's about as tall as he is. And because it's so much larger than a real-world wrecking ball, I've got to make my own. And that's not exactly an easy task. But I've got an idea. Easy as pie. The task at hand is to build a custom wrecking ball the same dimensions as the one in the clip, but weighing in at a realistic 5,000 pounds. <laughs> so are you starting to get the picture? It's a unique manufacturing assignment the Heinemann is tackling in his own unique way. There are a lot of different ways of making a big, heavy ball, but the quickest and easiest way I know of to do it would be with steel-reinforced concrete. Now, to do that, you need a mold, and I've come up with an idea of creating what amounts to a hemispherical-shaped auger that I can chuck onto the back of some earth-moving equipment and dig two hemispherical holes right in the ground. We pour our concrete in there around a steel armature, let it cure, put them together, and you got a ball, one big-ass heavy ball. Yep, to make two hemispherical molds. It's working! For the two halves of the concrete wrecking ball. That's what I'm talking about. Jamie's designed and constructed a one-of-a-kind tool. This is working great! <laughs> <laughs> Next! <laughs> 